Hey, it's Ike with Create or Die. Thanks for joining me for part three in our series to build a Polaroid camera inside of Blender. That's right. Whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or someone who's a little bit more advanced, I hope that you're able to pull some techniques from this process and adapt it into your own workflow. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe if you find value. Really appreciate it. And you'll be queued up and ready for part four when that rolls out, hopefully within the next day. So let's, let's get to it. Let's get our detail on. All right. Part three. Let the detailing begin. And in this part of the Polaroid camera modeling series, we're going to focus on what uh, is probably the hardest, most time-consuming part of the process, and that's detailing. And on this specific model, the Polaroid camera, that back portion of the camera is, is a little tricky. So as you can see, we've got these two separate pieces, the, the eyepiece and then the, the back housing of the camera and I'm just trying to line those up pulling uh, ver vertices and, and faces around. Now what we want to do is combine the, the two back pieces together. So the eyepiece and the the back housing piece. So I've selected both of them, hit Command J to join those together. So now we can work on them all as one piece of geometry. And now we need to find a way to combine these into a seamless piece. And so we're going to pull out the knife tool and start to cut around the eyepiece. We don't have to be perfect uh, just close enough because after we get the main cuts laid in here we'll uh, slide those vertices around and use snapping to snap them to the eyepiece so that everything's right where we need it to be and you'll see them jumping around the model, continuing to slice into it. Um, there's a couple of stubborn parts that don't want to to cut in. So just leave it be for now and we'll address that later. Okay, you'll see that it's still struggling to slice and I think it has something to do with the proximity of the two separate pieces of geometry. So I'm going to select the eyepiece and hide that. And you can see there's some, some gaps in my slices. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is merge vertices and select all of those vertices because sometimes you get some duplicates in there that keep you from being able to uh, to slice the way you'd like to. So you're seeing behind the scenes just brute force get through this thing. And I'm removing edges here and there just to keep things cleaner for now. Okay, and then using Shift V, sliding those vertices up. You can see there's a piece that I missed there. Okay, yeah, so it's adding a rogue uh, edge in there where I didn't want it, so I had to create a couple of new edges by slicing those into the model. So now that we've got the main housing uh, kind of sliced in, we can delete, select those faces and delete those pieces that we don't want. And now it's a matter of moving these top vertices 
over in a way that uh, they'll nicely line up with the curvature of the eyepiece. And so I'm just deselecting vertices as I move them along the x-axis and until I get it to, for the most part, wrap around that eyepiece. There's an extra edge I needed to cut in there so it would line up and connect that all the way around the model so it has a good termination point. So now we need to cut out the parts of the eyepiece that we don't want. So it's the same process. Just go around and slice that thing up. If you've ensured to merge your vertices and make sure your model's clean and tight, then that'll that'll help. Uh, I know we're rushing through this quick and I've got the speed cranked up to 400% at parts of this. Um, so it's going to go quick, but I assume that, you know, you've seen me do it once. Uh, you don't need to watch it in real time for the whole thing. And now I've turned on, I've enabled snapping to vertices and I'm just moving those vertices together to uh, ensure that it's going to fit the way I want. And kind of deciding, you know, do I want to move the vertice that's part of the eyepiece or do I want to move the vertice that's part of the, the back housing? And you can just kind of eyeball it and decide which one is in the best place. And then it's just a matter of selecting the pieces of the eyepiece that we don't need. Delete those on out of there. We've got a couple of strays down at the bottom. Delete those. And wow, the hardest part is complete. Or so we thought. <laughs> there, there's another section that we need to merge together that's even more involved. But it's essentially the same process. So just kind of scrolling around there looking at where the points are meeting each other, the vertices on each model, and then selecting all of those vertices around that seam and merging vertices by distance. And these ones were a little farther apart, so <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and snap those into place before I try to merge them, just so that they merge where I want them to be and not just in the center of where they currently are and meet halfway and then create you know, an undesired result. Probably wouldn't be the end of the world, but, you know, if we can make it nice, let's make it nice, right? That's what I always say. Let's make it nice. Oh, yeah. As you can see, I am found an area where I need to add some more geometry so that everything will meet up. And then just go around and select those edges again, merge by distance. They should be all tight and merged at this point. And then just playing with the, the edge flow here and trying to decide what I want, where I want those edges to come from. And all of these things can be changed later. It's just a uh, work in progress. So now I'm selecting the edges across that seam and then bevel those with Command B. And you'll see that created what looks like a molded plastic joint, just like the reference over on this on the side. Now it's a matter of just moving vertices around and 
doing a little bit more slicing and and deleting of edges so that we get something a little closer to what we're looking for Sliding those vertices around with Shift V, slicing in some new geometry, and then you can see there is some geometry I need to create across the back to connect everything together. And then during the uh, beveling process, we created kind of a a weird folded spot so we've got to kind of unfold that just by sliding those vertices around all right just gonna rotate around the model going into object mode see how it looks there look at it with subdivisions on Yeah. Now we've got to merge these two pieces together, the the back piece that we just created as well as the the other back piece, if you will. And initially, you can see that I just start pulling these vertices over, um, try snapping vertices to the edge, and then in looking at uh, the reference I can see that that's not going to quite work all the way around the model because we're going to lose kind of this this lip that uh, exists at the top here so initially I start playing around with you know creating some new geometry Um, to see how I can fill that gap and this is honestly like a, a, a hard puzzle to solve you know there wasn't like an immediate clear answer for me and honestly I I'm going the wrong direction right now so rather than merging all those pieces together I probably should have added a row of geometry in there to to link up with with the stuff at the top so it's hard to to explain but trust me we're going in the wrong direction for a while here but I wanted you to see the warts and all you know what what this entails you know we're we're at 400 speed right now and it doesn't look quite that fast because I'm pausing a lot thinking you know is this the right direction looking around trying other things you know that top corner is looking okay maybe I'll just add some keep going here but then as I start to connect that area to, together it's, it's looking weirder and there's going to be some some problems to solve to get all of the geometry to terminate um, elegantly okay this point I was thinking okay no we got this, we're on our way, it's just a matter of filling in this shape and we'll just inset this area, delete some of these extra polygons that, uh, that I didn't need and fill that area again, fill that hole and we'll be golden, right? not so fast you know you can see there's there's some problems to be solved for sure
you know, how am I going to connect all of this geometry together? And I try stuff, and I undo it, and I try something else, and, and whatever. See, I've just merged all of those pieces together. <laughs> Not sure what I want to do here. When in doubt, just merge everything together, right? And part of that is, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to bevel that edge and hopefully create something that uh, will start to, to start to work. So now I'm starting to get on the right track here. I've added some some new geometry around that edge. I'm now I'm going around and selecting that continuous loop. And you can see I selected some areas I didn't want to select. So I've got to deselect those. And then I got thinking Oh, maybe we can select both of those rings, and then it's like, wait, those don't connect. You can't do that. Okay, now let's bevel this whole area, and that starts to give us a place to work from. But then I had some some issues. I'm gonna merge some vertices. Hopefully, that solves the problem. Back into edge mode to try to select that entire loop once again so we can try to bevel this together again we're having some struggles so let's simplify the geometry try it again third time's a charm right let's bevel that okay it looks like it did it it's not perfect but it's something and now what do we do, right? We we did that part, but now we still have to get this geometry to flow nicely and do what we want it to do. All right, so continue to rotate around the model, nudge verts around, Trying to think, how are we going to make this all come together? And then I decide, you know, we need to create a, one continuous ring around this thing that makes sense. And find a clean edge around this tricky part that uh, is one complete loop. So that's what I'm attempting to create here. Okay, now do they connect? And no. No, they don't. So, what do we do? <laughs> We've got an edge that, or a loop that isn't meeting up. Which can be frustrating, to say the least. So, I'm trying to select the edges again to try to decide, you know, where we're at here. Is this, is this something we can work with or not? And as you can see, it's not. And then after sleeping on it, I decided to come back to it, and I'm like, this thing isn't going to beat me. We're going to figure this junk out, I'll tell you what. So we're rotating around, thinking, looking, 
hoping, dreaming. What can we do? What can we do? Then I decided, okay, somehow we need to connect this piece of geometry to the other. So this is where it gets all knotted up and how can we make this flow into into the area we want it to. So sometimes you just gotta walk away and come back to it and the solution will hopefully present itself. So we're just unraveling this mess of geometry and telling ourselves that we will find a way to make this make sense. But the most important thing is a continuous loop of edges around this piece, this back piece, so that it can connect to the other back piece. So that was the focus. So now I think I've got a pretty good read on things. Um, now it's a matter of bringing this new edge loop that I've created uh, and creating a way for it to terminate off the side of, of the back of the Polaroid camera. So just Slicing things up, slicing dicing with the knife. That's what we got to do. You can see I'm constantly rotating the model just to see it from different angles so that I can tell whether or not the edge flow is moving like I want it to. So now it's just a matter of moving vertices around, creating the edge flow that I need to ensure that we can eliminate all of these huge n-gons, polygons with more than four vertices and looking around the model rotating to get a feel for where these edges might go. Slicing around the back, definitely have less geometry back there. And you can have as much geometry as you want, you know, slicing through these hard surfaces like this, as long as um, it's clean. You can see I just separated the, the model so that I could kind of grab this edge and work with it without accidentally grabbing the other edge and just trying to use edge slide to slide it up and out of the way and first I tried to take a big chunk and that wasn't working so now I'm taking smaller chunks and sliding it and then even down to the vertex level and trying to create that same consistent amount of space between the two parts of the the back of the housing so once I'm happy with that distance there and that it's one separate piece now or that there are two separate pieces now I can merge them back together and then it's just a matter of bridging that gap and I'm sure there's a quicker way to do this um, but 
I've been doing it the brute force hard way <laughs> up to this point, so I decided to just keep on cranking through it. In fact, I was kind of excited to see it coming together, so I'm just selecting four verts at a time in a clockwise fashion and then hitting F to create faces. Da, da, da. Keep doing that and then once I've once I run into an area where it's going to be an end gone and there's more than four faces then I just fill that entire area rather than trying to creating create a face there you know you can just select the edge loop and hit F and create that whole thing and then go in and slice up those end gons how you like so there was my final end gone and now it's just a matter of slicing through there creating new edge flow that can go uh, travel across to the front face but now I'm focusing on this back end gone piece that is uh, a little, little tricky. Sometimes I <laughs> accidentally hit spacebar, and the if you can see in the top left corner, you can see the frame count just going, and it's just looping through. It's actually playing an animation and there's no keyframes so there's nothing animated but if you're wondering why those numbers are going crazy there in the top left corner it's because I hit spacebar and that <coughs> started playing the timeline and so if you're gonna move a point across the surface you wanna make sure you're in normal mode you can see top center of the screen there I'm in normal mode as opposed to world or local mode. So, yeah, slicing right on through. Realizing that I'll probably delete things and change things still, but it's just about playing this game of dismantling all of the uh, the end gons creating quads wherever possible and if you have to end up with a try or two a three sided polygon then so be it but I usually try to stick with quads if at all possible yep so this is time-consuming process to say the least but it's kind of fun you know eventually you're gonna get through it you're gonna have a successful looking model and have something you're proud of but just you know I think I said it before in one of the other parts just know that in the end there's no silver bullet there's no you know press one button and create a perfect perfectly optimized uh, model for me you know there are tools out there that will do some automatic retopologizing but you're gonna have millions of more polygons or create some kind of squishy geometry that's impossible to get the really clean hard surface stuff that uh, that we all are looking for and there I got a little creative with the way I terminated these uh, these polygons but we can do that and again it's all in that in a big flat spot so the subdivision surface will play nice with it man when am I ever gonna hit spacebar again and give the animation a rest on this thing it's, it's going crazy <laughs>
But you can see we're starting to get to a place where all of this crazy rat's nest of uh, edge flows that I had from those those welds, those plastic welds on this model are starting to take shape and come together and terminate off the side of the model where they can't do any harm because thankfully the front piece is separate and it's separate in the real thing and so whenever you can run those edges off the screen or off the the geometry off the front of it like that then you're gonna be golden And you might say, well, what what if I, you know, think I've squashed all of these N-Gons, but really there are some still floating around there somewhere. Well, thankfully, there are some tools that you can run, uh, some add-ons that will highlight um, any N-Gons. And I believe I'll I do that later at some point to ensure that I squashed them all but we still have some end guns that exist and some corners that need, need to be sharpened but I wanted to look at this in object mode with uh, subdivision surface on to see if we're heading in a good direction and we were so continue on with the slicing and dicing And I'm doing that same type of fancy termination as I did in the uh, on the other side of the model. So we're just trying to kind of mirror that, create a collection of quads in there. Then here you can see I've got some weirdness with uh, a complex pole on that side where you've got more than five edges touching so just looking for a way to kill that and I found one whether or not I decide to keep it is still up for debate And then I'm just sharpening these edges here, adding edge loops to hold these corners tight. And now I've selected those inner edges and extruded them out, scaled them in, making some Some more geometry here, beveling that edge, because if you look at the reference, it is a tightly beveled edge where those two plastic surfaces meet. And then the bottom part, doing the same thing. And this will get us pretty close to where we want to be. As far as the back uh, housing is concerned. So now, let's just move, move on to the, the front face. And continue to work that a bit. I've just... Uh, first activated subdivision surfaces on a lot of those different message mes meshes just to see how they all work together but you can see on this front face we've got us another puzzle there's a ton of ingons once again and now it's a matter of fixing that so look over the model try to decide 
what the best way to go is and just so you know in case I haven't said it yet when it comes to those circular holes you want to do everything you can to avoid you know terminating edges into those because it'll create some wonkiness in in the shape so you know a lot of times that's where I'll start from when it comes to uh, you can see I had to move those pieces which are not exactly in the right place doesn't make the best circle but had to be there so that we could get that little rainbow strip notch in there <clears throat> so now that I have that I'm gonna extrude those edges down then I'm gonna do a simple bevel just to get some extra geometry around that loop just to help keep it tight and now that's something I can build off of if you will but we had some some weirdness happen so we're just trying to bring that circle that cylinder back to true I deleted that middle piece out of there because I don't need it and now we're getting that rainbow strip in there and figured out so that it can can live as part of this model and not, not mess anything up and we've got the lens that's going to hide a lot of what's going on there but now I'm just taking the knife tool and cutting in some new edge flow and just like I did on the last part you know it's a trial and error thing so we're gonna cut we're gonna delete we're gonna try something new we're gonna you know slide edges around um, just to try to make things work and you can see I'm creating lots of edge loops across the front where they'll slide off nicely off of the front edge and terminate without any problems slicing and dicing and there's no wrong or right way to do this per se I mean you start to get a feel for it after you've done it again and again and again but you know as you can see I change things redo it try again and it's a it's a living breathing process if you will you know we could have taken some serious shortcuts on this model and and not actually cut into these big pieces and just you know stuck the 3d knob or, or the um, lens on the front of it and from a distance you wouldn't notice at all but if you want this to be viewed up close it's going to be a hero object maybe you want to monetize your new skills as a 3d modeler and you know sell these models on turbo squid or you know Envato or sketchfab or whatever um, you're gonna need to you know take your time and create something 
this that has value that someone will actually want to purchase you don't want to get the uh, reputation for just slapping things together real quick because you never know how people are going to use your models and um, they want things that are they're going to work in multiple applications and you know in some applications they just can't handle n-gons at all um, you know most modern 3d packages blender c4d moto you know maya whatever you know they they can handle n-gons with subdivision you know especially in big flat parts pretty easy but you know there are a lot of applications where they don't handle that where like unity or Un unreal i think uh i think they like to stay away from ingons look that was a tricky part and i did everything i could to avoid terminating inside of that circle it's not the prettiest edge flow but it's the correct edge flow based on the situation i had there so i know this is a hard one to follow along on but it's important and hopefully it you know helps you to realize that this is a process and it is a labor of love and it's going to take some time but if you've got a nice podcast rolling in the background like create or die or um, listening to your favorite tunes or whatever uh, this process can can definitely go uh, more quickly and and you'll you'll find that it's actually kind of enjoyable sometimes to just do this mindless uh, slicing and dicing you see I've got a triangle that probably just gonna have to leave because might be more trouble than it's worth to try to eliminate that because sometimes you'll have to add you know 20 polygons to eliminate one try and that's not necessarily the right idea sometimes it is sometimes it isn't preference We're winding down here. You know, now pretty close to squashing all those uh, end gons, at least on this main surface here. There are some end gons in the pieces that are covering the holes for the the knob and and the flash and well, not the flash, the the viewfinder, um, the red button, all that stuff. And we will attack that in the next episode. The final part, if you will, of this Polaroid model creation tutorial series in Blender. Oh yeah. And I lied. I had to at least address this piece. We good? Uh, uh, I think we're good for now. Hot dog! <laughs> I hope you had as fun watching that video as I did making it. As you could tell, I totally wasn't falling asleep at any point in the recording of the audio for that video. 
But seriously, uh, detailing is a, a long and, and arduous process. But you can make it fun, you know. Think of it like a puzzle. Uh, that's what I do. Create or die.